Coming up next is Murfreesboro Storytellers, originating this month from the Center for the Arts in downtown Murfreesboro. A special guest is the Poet Laureate from the state of Tennessee, Margaret Britton Vaughn, a native of Murfreesboro. Come on in. The Poet. The grit I tracked on the avenue came from the ruts in the road. The crossover was not easy, for the avenue knew not the hum of my song, but the song not hum will die unsung, so I hum it. The word I tracked on the avenue came from the language on the hill. The crossover was not easy, for the word not said will go unread, so I speak it. That's Margaret Britton Vaughn, Maggie Vaughn, poet laureate for the state of Tennessee, native of Murfreesboro, now resident of Bell Buckle, Tennessee. Welcome to Murfreesboro Storytellers, and our guest this month is Maggie Vaughn. It's a joy to have her, to have her read some of her poetry and to find out about her life and her work. Maggie, welcome to Thank Murphy you, John. Story Thank Cover. you so much. I, I picked that poem to start with because that's my philosophy. What I tried to do as a poet is I tried to take the small town south into the big cities and let them know what it was like to grow up in the small towns of the south. And and you and I both share that. Uh, we share mind. that. We certainly do. Growing up in Murfreesboro, yeah. Tennessee. Growing up in Murfreesboro and living some of my life in Gulfport, Mississippi. And, uh, Maggie, you were born uh, in I was, your early years on, on Church Street? On Church Street, right. I, just right around from the corner from this building. And it was a little, little house there, and mom and daddy rented. And of course, I was just a baby. I, I was, I, my, da I di my daddy died when I was nine months old. So, um, you know, I was in the church doing a reading not long ago when it was still a church, and I was back in the back in the part where it's educational. educational and I, I happened to mention to someone, I said, you know, we had a house right here. <laughs> and this man said, you're standing in your house right now. And I just burst into tears. I thought, well, they'll think I'm drinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. That's I'm just the educational, sentimental. The, educational just, building, yeah. the former educational building yes. of the First Methodist Church, yes. now, now. Mid-South yeah. Bank. Right. And yeah. you grew up in that block of uh, Church yeah. Street. Christened in the church. And I grew up in the 800 block of oh, is that Church right? Street. Well, that's, that's where I grew up. And christened in the church there, in the First Methodist in Church. In the First Methodist yeah. Church. Yeah. Maggie mentioned her father dying at, at, when she was only nine months old. Right. He, was, he died in a very tragic uh, fire department accident, as I recall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, she uh, was, was born here and lived here in her early years. And early years. moved later to mm -hmm. Gulfport, Mississippi. Yeah, Gulfport, Mississippi. So. Yeah, my mother remarried. I see. And um, he was transferred there. He was a physical therapist at the VA. So we all went there. And, uh, uh, what was your age when you moved to Gulfport? Well, I was probably around four, three so you, and a half or four. You have some, you have some recollections oh, oh, of and, Oh, there. listen, gosh, yes. You know, uh, my brother and I, my brother's Winfred Vaughn, who now right. lives in Gallatin. Um, we have great memories. Now, he stayed here for high school. I stayed in Gulfport. Mama said, y'all want to go to Gulfport? Stay here, or you want to go back to Murfreesboro? And he wanted to come back. And he stayed with a Mr. and Mrs. Sanders, who were his godparents. All right. And I stayed in Gulfport and uh, went on to college there in Mississippi. And, yeah. Where did you go to college then? I went to a Perkinston Junior College, which is now called the Mississippi Gulf Coast College, right. and then to Mississippi Southern, and, and uh, finished so out here at uh, MTSU because I couldn't pass biology at Gulf, <laughs> in Mississippi. So uh, I finally got a degree when, after 25 years or something. How long have you been writing poetry? How, how did you get into writing poetry? I was writing poetry when I was a little girl. Mm. I, and. Wonderful. I got my ear from country music. Um, I recognized what they were saying in those songs, how they could twist a phrase, and how great it was. You could see that image, and I thought, I want to do that. And so I started writing songs and country uh, in the country music field and poetry. My, I wrote my first song when I was in the third grade, and showed it to Mama, mm -hmm. showed her the paper, and it was titled. Here I sit alone at the bar. <laughs> Mama said, are you sure you don't want to be a nurse? I said, no, Mama, I want to be a poet and a songwriter. And I kept that dream. I tell young people all the time, keep your dreams. And it's you so have fun. been all your life then. All my life. 
Yeah. Then you've had some other work, the livelihood that you've done beside. Oh yeah, I was poetry. with uh, in advertising there in Gulfport with uh, with a newspaper, and uh -huh. they called me to work at the Tennessee and Banner for Newspaper Printing Corporation, which was owned by the Banner and Tennessee. Right. It was their advertising part, and I was there 17 years. Fourth of July weekend came in, and I thought. This is my independence. I'd been one time in April to New York City, and I saw a world going by, and I wasn't in it. Mm -hmm. And I said, hmm. And I got up July the 4th, and I said to my boss, I'm leaving. And he said, good grief, we're in a recession. Well, we didn't know we were in a recession back then. We didn't have cable news to tell us how <laughs> awful we were. And so um, I moved to Bellbuckle, and I've never regretted it. Not so one day. You more or less write poetry full time, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many poems have you written over the years? Oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm working idea? on my 18th book, but I, I don't know. You know the book I, you were reading from as we uh -huh. came on, is that? Yeah. That, it's that called your, The Light in the Kitchen Window. It's, it's my most popular book. And I'll tell you why. A lot of Murfreesboro's in this book. And I write about simple growing up. It's, okay. I don't write a lot of metaphors in this one. and. All that where you got to think, oh gosh, I got to have a dictionary to see what she's saying. <laughs> I just, I just wrote my early life years. I wrote a lot. My family lived out and still do out in Crescent. A okay. Little, okay. And so, uh, my granddaddy and grandmother had a farm. My aunt and uncle Mac Jones and Martha had a farm. Now my cousins have farms out there, John Hodge and, and Wendell. Right. And so um, I'm used to that earth. I spent a lot of time with them. As a matter of fact, I've told my friends, I said, when, I'm die, when I die and go, I want them to cut my heart out and bury it <laughs> in the family cemetery. And my friend who said, no, they're not going to do that. And I said, well, just put the, I told Wendell, put up a stone that says, my body lies in what's evergreen out here, but my heart lies on this patch of land because I, I love that land. How about one of the poems in that? We talked well, about that land well, right um, about old Murfreesboro. Oh, oh uh, let me read you uh, the courthouse square. Oh, this wonderful. is written about the square here. Oh, yeah. My granddaddy would come to town on a Saturday, and he, he'd have a little nip. What was his name? Uh, uh, Charles Britton uh, Tomlinson. All right, that's where uh, you get the Britton, Britton name? Yes. Okay. He'd have a little nip <laughs> before he got religion. <laughs> And um, he direct traffic down here on the square. Unofficially? Oh, yeah, unofficially, just directed. <laughs> had everybody wrecking and everything else. But this is written about the Murfreesboro Courthouse. Perhaps the greatest decisions that have been made anywhere came from men in overalls around the courthouse square. Problems Congress could never solve were worked out without strain. No law books were required, just a friendly checkered game. The background was Saturday's preacher yelling fire to those gathered there, another common sight around the courthouse square. Wall Street would be amazed at the deals that switched hands. Back then, the cost of living was to help your fellow man. Some people called them hicks, others put them down. City slickers would laugh and say the country had come to town. But this didn't bother them. Each week, they gathered there, but somehow time's erasing the old courthouse square. If books could have been written, if we just could recall the answers to these problems solved by these men in overalls. Instead, we wiped them out. No place for them today. The man with the right answer seems to be in the way. Someday we'll wish we listened to the answers given there, wisdom dressed in overalls around the courthouse square. And uh, that's from this courthouse here in Murfreesboro. And that was the story of the Rutherford County Courthouse for that, many years. That was Gathering it. place. Gathering place. That and the country store. We used to sit that's at the right. country store, have one in here there, uh, about the country store. There's a lot of rhyme in this book. That's why I think people love it because it takes the flow of it and the rhythm of it, takes them back to their childhood. Now, I've written books that it doesn't rhyme at all. Mm. You know, as I just wrote different. On up, I tried to do something different, and, but maintain the integrity of my beliefs. So you've written how many books? I published. I'm on my books? 18th right, on right your now, 18th. Mm -hmm. and I've been in anthologies and stuff around the country, and I don't know. I don't pay any attention. I just write them. Who appoints you as poet laureate? Is that is that a gubernatorial That's, appointment? No, it's it's part of it. All right. You're you're put up by your congressman, some congressman. All right. And then it's made into a bill. Right. And then it goes through the House, and then the Senate, and then signed by the governor. All right. So um, 
I've been lucky when I was put up, people like Doug Henry there in Nashville, he signed on. Oh, different, different, Henry, yeah, yeah uh, he was so nice. And uh, of course, uh, Pete Phillips back then was living. Clarence He's, Pete Phillips yes, from Shelby, Oh, he was right. so good to me. And now we got Jim Cooper and, and, and um, oh, just a lot of them who. There's another Jim in Nashville too. Jim Cooper. Yeah, but Jim Tracy. Oh yeah. Don't forget about him. Oh. oh. Didn't I mention him? Who you said I Jim Cooper. I think you no, Jim, Jim Tracy. Tracy. <laughs> yeah, Jim Tracy puts me up all the time. Yeah, well, we, he, were, we remember fondly of a recent dedication of the Fisher House at the yeah. Veterans Administration Medical yeah. Center here. Yeah. And people were talking about Paul Newman, I believe, yeah. at the time. Yeah. Well, I said, <laughs> I said, I used to be in love with Paul Newman. Now I'm in love with Jim Tracy. I just think he's so cute. And um, I never met his wife until the other day. There was a fundraiser over here, the tree, uh, Double Trees. I did. Probably, yeah. yeah and I, I walked up to her and I said, I'm the other woman. <laughs> and she said, I've been wanting to meet you. He loves you. And oh, I mean, he, he's just great. That's wonderful. You know? That's wonderful. Yeah. We mentioned about your appointment as Port Laureate. I believe your predecessor was a guy named Richard M. Peck Gunn. Peck Gunn. He was, he was quite an interesting character yes, as well. Yes, if you go around to estate sales, they've all got a pet gun mm -hmm. book. Mm -hmm. They love pet gun. As yeah. poet laureate, what, what are your duties? Uh, how, what do you have to do? Well, you what do, are you called on to do, okay. I should say? Again. Well, the, I, uh, Sunquist called on me a lot okay. because at the time we did the bicentennial yes. and we did the quarter coin, uh, the quarter coin. And so he would call on me at different places okay. to, to do these things. Uh, the, when I wrote the bicentennial poem, they called me and said, May, we want you to write a bicentennial poem. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay. So I wrote a couple lines and put it in a drawer. Mm -hmm. I, th I didn't think it was going to be a big deal. Okay. And um, two weeks later, they said, have you got your poem ready? I said, what? They said, well, you've got to be performing. They're going to meet somewhere in, at a shopping deal and all the um, house and Senate was there. Probably at the Bicentennial Mall, I bet. No, no, no we did not. that later. Oh, later, okay. And, um, and and so I I did it and I, I mean they went nuts over it I mean it rhymed yes. and it was very patriotic oh boy about Tennessee and so then at the bicentennial mall when when they okay. had the official right, one, the official one huh? when Gore was here June first nineteen ninety six I, I, I believe don't remember about. the yeah something like that and I did it and there were thousands of people mm -hmm. there you know and it was it was just wonderful it was mm -hmm. a great happening for me. That's not in that book. No, it? I don't have it. It's in a book that I'm out of. Okay. But I, I, I reprint these things when I get the money. By the uh, way, if someone wants to buy any one of your books, uh, I'll just where can write, they find them? Write me in Murphy's uh, Bell Book, or Maggie Vaughn Bell Book of Tennessee will get me. 37020. What's oh, a, I, see books out, I send books out all the time. What is a typical, a typical day in the life of a poet laureate? Well, let me tell you. <clears throat> I don't have a typical day. All right. If there's something on the news, I get up and watch that TV pretty closely. Mm -hmm. I watch all those channels to get their different opinions. Uh, the liberal, the conservative, I want to see where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. um, I shouldn't get up and write every day. Uh, I don't. I, some days I just don't do anything, just kind of sit there. But, but here's what happens. So many people come to my home to help, for me to help them and I help them write. I help them try to get published. I help them choose what to do <clears throat> and all this. I, I do, it's like Grand Central Station. So I spend a lot of my time doing that. Are these students or no, just they're, Oh, honey, they're students <clears throat> plus all the way up to 90 years old. Mm -hmm. I mean, they come, you can ask anybody, it's like Grand Central Station at my house. They come in and out, out all the time. And um, I mean, I had a couple, a couple years ago, come in from Saudi Arabia, I worry. and they they wanted to teach my books there to teach people there how it is to the South. So they took they teach my books there. Um, they've been taught in colleges, mm -hmm. and I go there and speak. And, <clears throat> um, I go speak wherever they want me. Now, in a, within a year and a half, from uh, July of 2012, I, I I came down with kidney cancer. Mm -hmm. Then a 2013, I had breast cancer. So within a year and a half there, I had two cancers, oh, but I'm okay. Well, but I tell ladies, oh, mm -hmm. ladies, get that mammogram. Mm -hmm. Get that mammogram, you know. Is that, is that what caught it? Well, I caught, I caught, I went, I <clears throat> had them all these years and I skipped a year. After I skipped a year, there it was. But it was still early. Good. And, and Good. so was the kidney. So 
I'm okay. Well, now, good advice. You, you can't slow me down. If, <clears throat> I'll get up off the hospital bed and make a speech. <laughs> okay, I bet. <laughs> if somebody wants to call it a career or become a poet, if you uh -huh. will, all right. What, what would be your best advice? Well, First of all, come to Bell Buckle and talk to you. Well, again. come to Bell Buckle. Anybody <laughs> can come to Bell Buckle. You don't become a poet. I think you're born. You, you, everybody gets a gift. Everybody. Mm -hmm. well, it may be a politician, a poet, an artist, a teacher. You're all given something that's that burning in the belly. And so if you have that, now, you learn as a poet how to develop it and go on with it sure. and everything. But I think you're born with, especially creative people, they're born with the creativity within their belly. And uh, I tell people that have this and they say, oh gosh, you know, I don't know if I ought to pursue it or not. I said, well, you know, <coughs> you either pursue it now or when you're 40, you'll look back and say, I'm going to pursue it now. Mm -hmm. um, I, you, you, it, it's there. It's got to come out. Do, does each state have a poet laureate? Yeah, most of them do. Do you have yeah. a gathering ever of all the poet laureates? Yes, we do. Um, the first one was several years ago in New Hampshire, mm -hmm. and I got quoted on the front page of the New York Times. Wonderful. Yeah, it was, it was wonderful. Now, um, since then, we've met in Indiana and Rhode Island. Uh, I uh, brought five poet laureates to Webb School, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, uh, South Carolina, <coughs> Virginia, mm -hmm. just uh, to speak there. We, some of us stay really close and um, help each other. And, um, Being there in Bell Buckle, do you teach or speak regularly at Webb School? Well, I go down there some, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah when they want me, yeah, I go. Eat at the Bell Buckle Cafe from oh, time to time? Oh, my Lord. Honey, I have to eat at the cafe. That's our social network. Oh, I know. It's a wonderful <laughs> place. And good food as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, read us another poem uh, um, about uh, good old South or Murphy. Good old South. Um, or rural Rutherford County. <laughs> How about, um, uh, we used to ride the train, my brother and I did, from Gulfport to Murfreesboro and then back. Okay. That was our m transportation. Uh -huh. And this is called the old passenger train. Mm -hmm. The trains don't come through anymore with shiny engine and red caboose. I guess we got in a hurry and the old train lost its use. But I remember riding the rails when I was a small child, listening to conductors yell, next stop, as they walked the aisle. The diner was always to the rear where ladies sat in veiled hats with feather, and there was waiters in snow white jackets and shoes of black, black shining patent leather. Men chewed on fat cigars and drank liquor from fine cut glass. Food was served on a platter and fixed pretty for the upper class. Bubba and I peeped through the window Tiptoeing on small, short legs, Mama always packed a box with fried chicken and deviled eggs. The stations where we waited for the train to pull into are mostly torn down now or turned into something new. But I remember the big black boards that read on time or late, and the big clock near the seating and the porter near the gate. I miss the smell of disinfectant they used to keep the floor clean, and the big baggage wagons outside and engines letting off steam. I miss the man with the gold, white, gold watch chain who sat in the ticket seat. I miss the big wooden seating fans that kept us from the heat. I guess that's all past with the countryside. Like that, it flew by fast, leaving remnants of rusty rails to remind us of our past. Yeah. And that was riding, oh, it was, we drove that train, we loved it. I, I, if, you, if I have the time, oh, please. I'll read you my most popular poem. That's what I want to hear. Okay, please. it's the one everybody wants to hear, and uh, it's the one who sells this book. Okay. It, this book has sold because of this poem. It's called, Is That You, Mama? Oh. Is that you, Mama, who just put a hand to my brow? And today, when I couldn't work things out, was that you who showed me how? Was that you, Mama, who just turned on the porch light? You always had one on to keep me safe at night. Mm. Mama, was that you by the stove cooking beans and cornbread? And was that you, do, you during the night standing watch beside my bed? Was that you, Mama, who knocked old Bumblebee away and you who called me in to supper when I came in from play? I know I felt you kiss my knee when I bumped in on a chair. And Mama, when I knelt to pray, was that you listening there? Or was that you, Mama? Is that you? Did God let you come home to me? Or maybe you never left. I was just too blind to see. 
Or was it I felt so bad today and you knew I needed you and God let you visit for just a day or two? Well, Mama, I'm okay now. You tell the Lord I said hi. But that, is that you, Mama, that just kissed me by? They oh, just tear up and wonderful. run out of the room. And, wonderful. You know, I get invited to speak to these real academic panels to the people, and I read this poem. Well, these academic poets think that's the worst poems that have ever been written. <laughs> they throw up. It makes them sick. But see, time to stop and sign books. There's three in their line, and everybody else is in, is in my line. line. And I lean over and I say, if you write something about your mama, you might sell a few books. <laughs> so that's what I tell them. That's that, and then the counting on Sunday where I counted everything in church because I was bored. That's another one that. Is that in this book? That's in yeah. this one too. Let's yeah. hear that one then. What, do I have time? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, this is the good part of the program, having oh, you read your poem. Oh, Lord, honey. I see uh -huh. now. I, uh, well, Lord, I've got to find it. Here it is. You're just a joy to be you around. Know, huh? no, no, matter, no matter where you go to church, it's not normal if you don't get bored. You know, at you just some get, point in time. Uh -huh. uh, uh, yeah, and most of the time I'm bored all the time. <laughs> but years ago I wrote this. It's called Counting on Sunday. Okay. He didn't have his heart in his sermon. If he did, it didn't show up in any enthusiasm in his voice. And I didn't have my rest of soul in church. If I did, I wouldn't have counted the 823 bricks on the wall outside of one of the 48 window panes behind the 16 white shutters that helped shade the sunlight off of 11 crosses, two brass, four on cloth, one on a plaque that's nailed to the rail that leads to the wooden one that's carved on the altar just left to the wooden one that holds the page numbers that face the one on the concrete, on, uh, in concrete on the baptismal font that stands beside the organist who is married to the preacher who has a silver one hanging around his neck as he speaks to ten women, eight men, and four children who sit in 21 pews and hold 161 hymn books <laughs> under 78 electric candles that shine on five doorknobs, two flags that stand over 11 eyeglasses, eyeglasses two, seven necklaces, two flower arrangements, one hair bow, one bow tie, one silver barrette, and a sermon in a pear tree. And I counted every one of those things in that church. Yeah, where was this church? Uh, in Shelbyville. In Shelbyville. Yeah. I yeah. figured that was, must be an the actual Episcopal church. Episcopal church. And, okay. You know, right. I was born in, to, um, um, well, I, I was christened in the, Meth, the Methodist right. church, but my family was mostly, except Mama was Church of Christ. Um, but they had many, too, too many rules, so I became a Methodist full time. <laughs> then I became Episcopalian. They have not a lot of rules at all. But I've gone back to my Methodist roots. But, okay. But church have gotten so crazy. Sometimes I, I have a whole book called You Laughing Ain't You God behind nutty churches getting you go here, they can't do this, you can do that, and you go here, they got a new set of rules, and all that. I just I'm tired of it. Okay, Not gonna listen good. to it. What yeah. advice would you give to a young person then that, that wants to get into your field, I'll call it? Keep on writing. Just keep on writing. Keep on writing and get with people who write. Get with people who are already established poets, mm -hmm. who can give you good advice. Um, take some classes if you can. However, so many classes are taught by t the teachers who are just like maybe English teachers. Mm -hmm. And they're looking for punctuation and grammar. They're not looking for that image. It's image, image, image. Make me see something when mm -hmm. you read me a poem. Mm -hmm. Make me see all those things in that church. You know, and you, I just did yeah, everything yeah, you've yeah, read. Right. You, you see it, see. And just keep on doing it and hone your craft. Just And, and you just keep doing it. Tell me about your friendship with Loretta Lynn. Oh, I met Loretta Lynn when she first came to um, Nashville. Okay. I was working with a paper. And um, no, no, I went a year there before I worked for the paper to write. And I signed on with the Wilburn Brothers, Surefire Music. Okay. as a staff writer. And they said, you know, w we want you to uh, write with a girl we're bringing in. We're hoping to sign her up for a contract and everything. And y'all write so much alike. And they said, it's Loretta Lynn. And I said, oh, I'm, she's got a hit song out. Well, that Saturday night, backstage to Ryman, I met mm -hmm. her. And we became close. Matter of fact, about four or five years ago, we wrote a song, was nominated for a Grammy. Wonderful. Yeah, I, I still write for her. Okay. Just getting down there and getting our schedules together. And, we're both getting old. That's wonderful. So you've written a number of songs. For oh, yeah, yeah, and, and other people. I, I, uh, like I said, I got my voice from country music. The way you could, I mean, when you listen to this country music, 
Well, for, I'll give you an instance. Hank Williams said, did you ever see a, uh, uh, well, a robin wheat when leaves begin to fall? Man, you see that robin and mm -hmm. that leaves. And Barbara Mandrell did a song about um, the man. Her husband said, you must think my home's a bus stop. Well, the, well, you come and go. I haven't seen you three nights in a row. Mm. But there's a line in there where she's talking about, and she says, I won't lay mama silver for a man who won't say grace. Well, you know, a lot of us don't say grace anymore, but we grew up in a family that mm -hmm. said grace. Mm -hmm. And you just see that silver on the table that they got out on special Sundays and stuff uh, that mm -hmm. was handed down. And I thought, wow, what a line. I, I do a whole... Um, uh, thing on history of country music where I bring all this in and how the uh, country music why it was so popular and still is. You do a presentation mm -hmm. on that? On that country uh, music, yeah. You do that for classes or Yeah, groups? anybody who wants me, different groups. Anybody out there who wants me to speak at their group, I'll be come over and do it. You know, I, I speak at the churches, organizations, schools. I do a lot of in-services with teachers. Good. You know, I know I, you've been very prominent in a lot of the memorial services for firefighters. Oh, yeah, I do that anytime they come. Tell us about that yeah. connection. Well, my dad, I was nine months old, and my dad was um, on the fire, way to a fire, mm -hmm. and um, a truck hit, a, a pickup truck hit our tr his truck. Mm -hmm. Someone said they thought it turned over. I don't know. Yeah. But my dad died in that. And so... Um, I remember hearing about that as yeah, a Yeah, well, the firemen, you know... Um, my mama never let us forget my yeah. daddy. Oh man, wonder, it was wonder. it was you know. Now a lot of times she'd say, "Oh, you're hard headed just like your daddy," <laughs> but she, I mean, it, he was there in our lives the mm -hmm. whole time. And you know, something real tender happened uh, the last time I spoke. Now my dad's been dead for seventy five years, okay. seventy four. I'll be seventy six in, in okay. July, so he's been dead almost he, but almost seventy five years, and. The, you know, now when a fireman is killed on duty, the firemen really rush in there to help the family and everything. And, and he, they said to me, these firemen did, the last time I spoke, they said, if we can ever do anything for you, let me know. And I thought, that was so nice. You know, they didn't have to say that. Yeah, the firefighters really... They, they, a, you're family. Real, real close to your family. family. You are family. We've time for one more. Okay. Uh, can you read one more poem? One more poem? It's been All a joy right. having you, Maggie. Okay. Well, wonderful. thank you. Um, Okay, this is called Time, because this is what I write a lot. I read right. to the poet, because, okay. Sure. Time has two hands, one that sweeps out the past to make room for the future, and one that clutches to, to preserve the past. One hand is moved by the brain, the other by the heart, both mean well. And when I see these buildings torn down, it kills me because they put up a piece of junk. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Yeah. Maggie, it's been wonderful having Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, John. You. Please have me Thank back. Oh, okay? we will. Come to Bell Buckle. Our special guest has been Margaret Britton Vaughn, Maggie Vaughn, Poet Laureate of the state of Tennessee, and our program has been originating from the Murfreesboro Rutherford County Center for the Arts, formerly Lineball Library, and originally, as of 1909, the United States Post Office. Thank you for joining us for Murfreesboro Storytellers. Bye.